Hi, this is Eugene Blanchard. Uh, um, this is part five of Do-It-Yourself Dino, and this video is going to talk about moment of inertia. We're going to go through first the proof of concept results. We're going to take a look at them because they don't look right. Uh, we're going to look at moment of inertia, what it is, and we're going to look at how uh, brake rotors versus cylinders. Uh, we're going to talk about how to measure the moment of inertia, and then we'll build a, a um, a jig to, so that we can actually measure it and verify our moment of inertia. And then we're going to talk about the critical measurements in our test jig. It affects the math. When we took a look at the, our proof of concept results, what we found is that our maximum horsepower was 1.14 horsepower, three seconds coming in. So right here we got a peak. And I thought this was okay. I thought my uh, motor, I thought the motor that I had, um, this motor I got from a table saw, I thought it was a one horsepower motor. Um, and the problem is, is on this motor, there's no markings. Normally there's a sticker that gives the specs on it, says what the voltage is, uh, what the RPM is, what the uh, um, manufacturer model number, what the uh, horsepower, and uh, there's nothing on here. And the table saw I got for free, and it was from 1980 or so, uh, quite old. Um, it wasn't a very good table saw. Uh, when I got my new one, I, I just took this apart, took the motor out. Uh, now, I was looking up model number, it's a Rockwell model 34-580C, and I was looking up 34-580, and that came back with lots of results that said it was a one horsepower motor. Well, when I did a search for the C, this was the only document I could find on the internet. One document on the whole internet that talked about this model. It's only three quarter horsepower and it was at 115 volts. I'm running it at 120 volts and even if I did the calculations for horsepower at 120 volts, it's only about a 4% increase over three quarters. So it doesn't get anywhere near the 1.1. So what it means is that what I have to do is take a look at why uh, Simple Dyno is reporting such a high um, horsepower at 1.1 horsepower. Right, so we're going to look at the very first thing we're going to look at is the moment of inertia. So what is a moment of inertia? Moment of inertia is uh, how much force is required to turn a rotating object. In our case we're looking at some sort of cylindrical ob object. That's our inertia in our uh, dyno here. Now when you open up a uh, simple dyno and you click on the dyno tab. This is the dyno setup. So there's a button for dyno setup and you have some non-critical parameters and you have the critical parameters. The critical parameters are used to determine the moment of inertia and what they'll do is it'll calculate it down here. Now these are the numbers that I used. I it ends up that the brake rotor uh, so if I click on here the brake rotor diameter was 280 millimeters. So from here to here was 280 millimeters, which is around 11 inches in uh, Imperial. Uh, the roller wall thickness, which is the rotor part, was about 2.8 inches, which is 71 millimeters. Uh, I weighed the mass and it came out to about four, uh, let's see, 28 pounds, 28.1 pounds, which works out to about 128,000 grams, right? Um, then I measured the axle diameter and it was about one inch and then I measured the mass and I, I guesstimated here and it came out with a moment of inertia and as you, as you change these values here so if I change it to 60 it will change to 0.166 right so basically what happens is it uh, it will automatically calculate it for you so I'll go back to 71 this is the values I had now the problem is that when I take a look at uh, the brake rotor, so here's the brake rotor, uh, it's 280 millimeters in diameter, uh, from here to here it's roughly 71 millimeters, and it has all of this stuff inside, right? It's not quite, and I have two of them together, and I have a, a chunk of metal in here, so my question is, is, is that calculation valid for uh, the brake rotors that I'm using? Right. The other thing that happens is on the brake rotors, I've got a, a adapter plate in here, and I've got my axle shaft, and then I also have a, a, a sprocket gear with a weld on weld on sprocket gear. So I have all of this weight here. So the question is, is how valid is that calculation for this inertia device that I'm using? 
How do you measure a moment of inertia? Well, it's interesting. It's a little bit like black magic. Uh, what you do is um, I'm going to use a triad method, which means I'm going to use three strings that are suspended from the ceiling. And then I'm going to have a little platform here. And on the platform, I'm going to put my brake rotors. Then what I'm going to do is cause an oscillation by taking one of the corners and move, pull it over and let it release and it's going to oscillate back and forth. And I'm going to measure the time for one oscillation. Now if I know that, I can use this formula here. So I've got this uh, information. Um, I pulled it off the internet. I don't know the source. In the source it did reference um, theory of machines and mechanisms where this information they got it from. Uh, we have a formula here and the formula says the uh, the inertia of the object plus the inertia of the platform is equal to gravity times the mass of the object plus the mass of the platform times the radius squared times the time of the oscillation squared over 4 times the length of the string times pi squared. So what we have to know is the radius from here to here, right? whatever that radius is, um, that's going to be critical. We have to know the length of the string and then we have to know the time of the oscillation. And, the other and we have to know the mass or the weight of the platform and the weight of the uh, uh, rotor. So what I'm going to do is the very first thing you have to do. Uh, I'm not going to do it in one step like this. I'm going to do it in, in two. First I'm going to measure the platform's moment of inertia. So I'm going to to set up a platform. Uh, I'm going to have it from strings hanging from the ceiling and then I'm going to cause a little bit of oscillation and then what I'll do is I'll count for 10 oscillations and then I'll use my stopwatch and then I'll stop it and then I'll divide it by 10 and come up with the time for one oscillation. And I'll do that five times. Right? So that way, and then I'll take the average of, of the two. Then what I'll do is I'll put my brake rotor on top and I'll do the same thing and that will be the total. Uh, it'll come up with a moment of inertia for the platform and the brake rotor. Once I come up with that moment of inertia, then I can subtract the both of them with the original one which was just for the platform and then it will come up with a moment of inertia just for the brake rotor and the uh, uh, brake rotor assembly. So the very first thing I had to do was figure out how to make an equilateral triangle. Equilateral triangle, all the sides are the same. right? So I had a scrap of wood and uh, I figured on the scrap of wood it, it was a rectangle. I could have it 10.75 inches high. Uh, so I used a bunch of geometry, cosines, and sines, and I figured out that, oh, if it's 10.75 inches high, then each side is going to be 12.41 inches, right? And the center radius will be 7.17 inches. Well, right off the bat, this caused a problem because I was using imperial system, which meant I had to translate it into metric later. So this was a, a, a problem later on. So what you should do if you're doing this, Stick with uh, uh, metric system because that's what the, the uh, mo moment of in inertia is being calculated in simple dyno. Uh, what I also found is that if I use the equilateral triangle like this, I could have a circle of up to 14 inches resting on this. Right, 14 inches it would it would touch where I would have the uh, uh, strings attached. Right. My brake rotors are 11 inches, so they will fit perfectly fine in here. After I did this, uh, I kind of looked at the numbers and I found out that it's actually pretty easy to uh, create an equilateral triangle. Um, very first thing is you find out what this height is here, A, and this length here is going to be 1.155 times A. So if this is 10, this will be 10.55. Uh, where this middle is is going to be exactly half of this. So if we divide by 2, then we know what this side is and this side. Once we have that, we can draw our line here and then just draw a line, bang, bang, we're done. Right? Don't even have to measure the 60 degrees on an equilateral triangle. Every of the corners are 60 degrees because they add up to 180. Um, our center radius, I've marked it A over 3 from here to here, but it's actually this distance from here to here. It's 2 thirds of A. So our radius will be 2 thirds of A. So this makes it a very easy 
uh, way of making an equilateral triangle. Then what I did is I drew it out. Uh, so this is my equilateral triangle and I made a, a little bit bigger here because I want to drill a hole in here in all the, the three corners and, and put some strings. I had some uh, nice big washers on the other side that's going to support it and hook up my strings. And, that, and I, I wanted this to be as tough as possible and I had my center uh, hole that I'm going to drill large enough for uh, my brake rotor assembly which is back here to fit in. Right. So I made two of them and then what I did is I stuck them on top of each other and then I could drill the holes. Alright, so what I have is my platform uh, for measuring the moment of inertia. Uh, what I have it is bolted onto the ceiling. Uh, i got a nice equilateral uh, triangle. I've got some uh, string coming down. It's not string, it's actually the uh, wire used for weed whacker. And that. Uh, this is level. And then what I'll do is the first thing I'll do is I'll measure the moment of inertia of just this platform by itself. And all you do is you sort of give it a, a little rotation this way. It has to be rotating like that. One, two, oops, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Here is the uh, uh, brake, drum, brake rotors resting on my triad measuring device and that you can see it's right at the limit of it. <laughs> Once I got my results, here's the results, I put them into a spreadsheet and uh, I had things like my rotor weight, I had to translate from uh, my rotor weight from uh, pounds to kilograms. I had my platform weight was one pound. It gave me my kilograms, the string length to put it in. Uh, I measured in centimeters. It had to be in meters. Uh, the, the radii, the radius, uh, centimeters into meters. And then I uh, put my values in here. So um, it was interesting is that when I first uh, started counting it, I would start one and then push and I would count up to ten. But in actual fact, I was starting uh, my timing at one instead of one full cycle. So I did the two platform times, I, I counted properly to 10, and then I did uh, uh, five more that were only nine cycles. And I came up with the average time here is 1.265, very, very close here. This is about as accurate as you can get. Uh, I was using my cell phone as a, a stopwatch. and that. Um, I did the same thing for the rotor. I did five tries here. And uh, you can see that the times are anywhere from 10.46 to uh, 10.51. Uh, this is the time for nine oscillations. Then I divided by nine and it came up with what one oscillation was. Um, then I calculated the uh, moment of inertia of the platform. It came out to 0 0.00547 kilogram meters, a very small amount. Uh, both of them was 0 0.15685. And the, and if I subtract these two, I get the moment of inertia just for the brake rotors assembly is 0.15137, which is very close to what um, uh, Simple Dino calculated was uh, about 0.152 or something, for 0.154 or something. Right? Um, now, what happens is that there's also a component also of the uh, uh, chain Right, so we're going to calculate the chain in a sec. But one of the things I was thinking is that uh, I was using a weed whacker plastic uh, uh, cord for a string and I thought, well, it's kind of stiff and maybe what it's doing is it's putting some tension on there and it's restricting the time. So uh, what I did is I redid the, uh, the whole process. I used lighter gauge strings and when I came up with lighter gauge strings, I found that the, uh, uh, the actual time for the platform here is uh, with the weed whacker string is 1.265 seconds and with the uh, uh, a regular light string it was 1.272 so it really didn't make that much difference at all right uh, and that um, the same thing with the rotor time uh, it was uh, 1.17 with the uh, weed whacker and then 1.141 so very very little difference on here and when you you do the calculations you find out that you know we're talking that's less than a percent difference change on it. And that, now, 
uh, one of the things uh, um, that's part of the uh, my system is the uh, moment of inertia caused by the chain. So you, I have a gear here and a, a sprocket actually, this was on the motor, and then uh, I have my chain that went on to the sprocket that was on the um, brake rotor. Uh, basically that was part already weighed as moment of inertia as the brake uh, rotor assembly. So it, it's actually a very simple calculation to determine the uh, uh, moment of inertia of a chain. Um, so basically, if the chain is removable and can be weighed separately, that's what, in my case, uh, the moment of inertia is equal to the mass, the weight of the chain, times the radius squared. The radius is on the gear here. So it's from, uh, you have your roller, and on the roller you have your pins. So diagonal here, I measured that, and, and that was my radius. If your chain can't be removed, then what happens, you have to know the mass per length of chain in kilograms per meter. That's a standard uh, metric unit for it. Uh, and you can get that from the manufacturer. Um, I bought this chain years ago, and so I went and looked online to see what the uh, mass per unit length of a, the chain was. And for a number 35 chain, you can see a 35 right here. And uh, one manufacturer said it was 7.6 kilograms per meter and I went to another manufacturer and it said it was 6.7. So that sort of motivated me just to take the chain off and measure it separately. Uh, then you have the length of the chain, so the mass of the chain per kilogram meter uh, times the length and that will give you the mass of the chain when these two are and, that, and then the radius squared again. Um, in my results here, um, the mass of the chain, the weight was 0.266 kilograms, uh, the radius was 3.07 centimeters, uh, converted to meters, and it ended up it was 0 0.000251 kilogram per meter squared, which is very, very small compared to the mass of the uh, moment of inertia for the uh, rotors. So it, it made hardly any difference at all. So what factors are going to really affect your measurements here? Uh, we're going to take a look at the, the formula. Our formula was basically uh, moment of inertia is equal to gravity times the mass or the weight of the object times the radius squared, the time squared, divided by four times the string length, pi squared. So if we look at this, what we see is gravity is a constant, so it's not going to change. The mass of the object is not going to change, right? We just have to measure it accurately. Uh, now the radius, look at this, it's squared. So any error in the radius, from here to here is going to uh, uh, be really magnified. Uh, one of the things I found is that uh, my length of my sides here were not what I expected. They were 31 centimeters and I, I believed I had it a little bit longer. And then when I measured my radius, it was different also. So you have to really double check, like especially when you're building uh, something like this, uh, double check that your measurements are exactly right for the radius because this is any error there is going to be amplified drastically because it's squared. Uh, also with the time, uh, you have to be very careful with the time uh, of one oscillation because it's squared. So these two are critical uh, measurements here. Uh, for uh, the string length is a length from here to here. Double check from uh, this point to this point. Uh, um, that it's correct, and then pi squared is not correct. So those are the factors that are going to uh, affect it. So uh, factors is the distance from here to here, the center, from here to here, and then the string length. This concludes this video for now. Thank you.